In today's video, we're going to explore techniques on how to create good black and white images. Black and white and Lightroom Classic coming up. I'm Terry Vanderheiden, professional photographer, and I'm here to teach you Lightroom Classic 2025 from the ground up. Welcome to episode six of our beginning workshop in Lightroom Classic. In our last session, I promised you how I was going to show you how to create stunning black and white images in Lightroom Classic. There's a lot to cover, so let's dive in. All right, inside Lightroom, we're inside our catalog that we've been working on. And let me go ahead and click on a couple of images. I added a couple of new images and these will be ready for you to download too. If you want to go to the download site, you can add these to your, to your practice gallery and work on these images. I don't want you to share them obviously, but you can practice on them and work alongside me as you do work on these images. So we got a portrait here and we have a landscape. So let's start with the portrait. So what I like to do is, as always, create a virtual copy before we start. So let's go ahead and do a virtual copy of this image. You know what? We're going to do two virtual copies. So let's do two of them. You can see down here in this section, this is our little film strip that allows us to see what images we're working on, especially if we've got them filled up here. If we're in our grid mode, we can see them nice and large. However, we want to move this little slider for the thumbnails. But if you're not, if you're already, if you're in, say, the develop module or something, you can still see down here the images that you're working in. All right, so let's go into develop. Our first section here is the basic panel that we've been working on. So we have the ability just to slide down here, come down to saturation, and pull that saturation completely over. So we've essentially created a black and white, right? We've taken all the color out of an image. But let's take it a little bit further and see if we can do a little bit better and a more controlled job of our black and whites. So let's take a look here. So one of the things to consider, if you ever shot film back in the day, if you shot black and white film, uh, you typically would have filters, color filters, red, orange, different colors that you would put over the lens when you're shooting in your black and white film because we weren't, didn't have a care about how the colors were going to look because it was just black and white, just monochrome. But a red filter would counteract, say, the blue in the sky and make the sky much darker. So we had control over those colors based on how we were shooting it. So today we don't need to do that. We can just shoot color all we want and then go through with our images, have the control afterwards in Lightroom Classic. And that's what we're doing here is we're going to have the control afterwards in Lightroom Classic. So the other thing that happens too, when you're working inside a Lightroom Classic, you have the ability to come over here to click black and white, but watch what happens. I want to show you something first. We, we're going to triang triangle this up. We have our basic panel, tone curve, color mixer, color grading. See how these are all different panels that we can get into. When we're in the basic panel and we decide to go to black and white, well, guess what? When we come down here, that color mixing panel now turns to black and white. So it's going to mix the black and white colors, kind of similar to the way we would do with our filters, right? So let's go ahead and click on here. And you can see that now we have these new sliders that are all up here that are going to adjust how the colors read in black and white. So let's go here. We'll zoom this up a little bit. So now inside of this black and white mixing panel, let's take our red slider and move it a little bit. We can move it to the right and lighten those lips or darken them. So we have the control of how we want colors to look, how we want them to render inside of Lightroom Classic. So let's say we want to make those lips a little bit darker. So we'll move that slider over this way. And then if we want to take our orange, if you remember from the original, her skin, tan and orange, there's a lot of orange and yellow in the skin. Let's go back in here and let's see what we can do, right? So we, as we move this, we can make it real dark if we wanted to. See all those eyes pop out? That's pretty wild. But unless you're going for something really strange, let's slide this over and we can lighten up that skin, right? Let's lighten up that skin a little bit. Same with uh, the yellow, right? There's some yellow in there. There's also, check this out. Look at the top of her hair there. If you remember from the original, this was kind of an amber tone that was cutting across her hair. We come up here. 
and we take our yellow slider, look at, we can control how bright that yellow is, right? What kind of tones we want that yellow to be. So we can brighten it up to create that contrast. And as we slide down here, you'll see that the greens don't do a ton. Uh, the She was wearing black against a black background. Not much difference in those tones. So all the sliders aren't going to have an effect every time. And of course, if you don't want anything done with the sliders, any slider in Lightroom, double click on the word and it centers it. So it was those first three sliders that were making the biggest difference. Now, the next thing that I want to show you is inside of Lightroom Classic, you have, of course, this histogram. We talked about it last time. And if you want to be able to see what effects your controls are making on an image, I want you to hit the letter J. So if we hit the letter J, did you guys see this blue come up? We'll turn that off. Hit the letter J again. It goes off. It's a toggle switch. So what this is telling us is anything that's blue showing up blue on this while this toggle switch is on, it's saying that's going to be no detail black. There's not going to be any tone in that, any, any detail in that black. So as we look at this, let's go ahead and take our sliders. Let's look at our sliders here. And we can take and let's take our whites, for instance. If we slide that over, look at that. Now that becomes red. So that's telling us that, that we've met the boundary of our whites, right? The whites, anything that's red is not going to have any detail in it. That's going to be essentially paper white, total white. So it's not going to have any detail in it. So obviously in a portrait, you wouldn't want that much uh, pure, pure white in an image. So you kind of have to little, be a little bit careful. And that letter J is a toggle switch that will allow you to control how that looks, right? So we can take this slider and we can say, well, we want it bright, but we don't, we only want just a little tiny little bit of pure, pure white will be acceptable. And the same with the black. If we're looking at our blacks and we slide the blacks one way or the other, see now, now we can see how much really pure black we have in this image just by sliding this over, right? This is a way that you can do that and control your tones on an image, right? And just by having that letter J, you're toggling it on so you can see the difference. Now, we, this is just a, a little bit of work that we've done on this one black and white image. Let's go ahead and take a look at our original and let's put them side by side so we can see them. So the original one where we just took color out, right? We took the color, we just took the color away. We had no control over the skin tones, no control over the lips, the hair, anything. But over here, now we had that control over those tones. So this is a much better way to control your black and white and have a complete output the way that you want. So the next image I'm gonna show you is a landscape and I'll show you, this is probably gonna be a little more practical for your black and white images, but let me show you how that works. If you're enjoying this kind of content, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you'll be reminded of my next video. I always read and respond to all the comments, so feel free to leave a comment, a question, a suggestion, and I'll get back to you. I love hearing from you guys, and it's a great way to kind of banter around ideas and, and a way that I can get new ideas for different videos that I'm gonna put out in the future. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can directly contact me, terry at imagelight.com, and I'll be happy to answer your questions and add you to my mailing list so you can be notified of my videos that way. All right, let's get back into the black and white. All right, so here's a panoramic of Yosemite Valley. Let's go ahead and make a couple of virtual copies of this. And let's make another one. So on this first one, we'll do the same thing we did last time. We'll go in the develop module and we will come down to saturation and just take the saturation out, take the tones out, all the color out of this image. Now let's go into our next one. And now we're gonna do our standard way. We're gonna click into black and white, click it into black and white rather, and then come to our black and white sliders and start looking at how we can control the tones. And in contrast to the portrait image, the reds and yellows don't make up as much of a, play much of a role. However, down see this green area here? Always when you're working in greens, you can see that yellow plays a big role in green. 
So especially in foliage, there's a lot of yellow reflected in foliage. So as you're sliding this around, you can decide, do I want to have more detail so we can see into that foliage or do I want it dark to frame the image? So depending on what you want to do, we're going to darken it this time. And then of course you have greens. We can move the green sliders that will control some of the green that's in those, in that foliage as well. Aqua might control a little bit of contrast throughout the whole image because we're up in the high Sierras and it's more of a, you'll have a little bit of a aqua tone to it. And then blue, check out blue. We can look at that. We can control the sky almost completely. This is awesome being able to darken the sky. And you can imagine if we had clouds in that sky, we'd have a lot of contrast there. So let's go ahead and just darken that a little bit. So look at what we've done. We've created a lot of this contrast based on these sliders, right? Pretty simple way to go. Now, here's the next se section that I want you to look at. If we go into basic, we can come in here and slide down and check out, remember those sliders we talked about last time? Then the present sliders where we talk about texture, uh, clarity and dehaze. Well, these are, these do work with contrast, right? So when we're working in, in black and white, we can slide this dehaze a little bit. See how that we can make that much darker, much more contrasty, less contrasty. We have control over this. So let's go back into the letter J and put that in and we toggle it. See how those are highlighted that way. We know that's toggled and highlighted in. Now watch what happens when we move this dehaze. See, we can start bringing in blacks inside of the mountain side here. All these blacks are in here. And it'll give you an idea of how this actually looks, right? So that's a simple way to work with your sliders. You work with black and white, go into the black and white sliders, adjust the tones the way you want them. And then lastly, go in and work with your presence. Now, there's another way that's a little more advanced, but I think you guys can handle this. And that is working with a tone curve. So same deal, we just went in, we converted to black and white, went into our black and white sliders, and we moved our sliders around to fit what we were looking for. We have our letter J toggled on, right? So we can see what's happening. Let's go up to tone curve. Now we've got this tone curve that we're used to working with. Let's go ahead and just click this first one here. And this will keep us in this area. Now check, check this out. As we slide around in here, if we're on highlights, you'll see that this section here, this little leaf, this is the area where all the highlights reside in the image. And if we come down to lights, you can see this is where all the lights reside. And then of course the darks and then the shadows. So that's where everything falls into play. And it's very similar. See this little histogram is very similar to this histogram up here. And this is just showing us where these parts of the images are. So let's go into our highlights here and we can slide our highlights around. We can darken them or lighten them, make them whatever tone we want. And now look at the tops of the snow is pure absolute white because we have just controlled how that, how that's going to go. Let's take a look at the lights. Same deal with the lights. We can darken it, lighten it, create more, more whites, pure whites if we want. So we have that control in contrast. So we're just dealing with contrast in this image, right? We're not dealing with colors. We've already assigned all the colors how we want them to look. So this is just assigning how we want the tones to look. Same with the darks. If we want the darks to be really dark, uh, obviously, because we have the, the toggle switch on J, then you can see here, this is all going to be pure black. Do we want that? That's probably not, but you know, everybody has their own decisions. And the same thing with the shadows. We can slide that and get more shadows or not. So having that toggle switch on, J, off or on, you have the ability to control how you want this image to look, right? So let's go just for kicks. Let's take a look at what we've done. Our first image, this is one where we just took the color out. And this is the second image where we actually started working with those tones, changing the tones and changing the contrast of the tones. So black and white is really a fun medium to work in. You know, you can, you can actually go out and shoot with planned going to be black and white images, right? When you're shooting, you can say, Oh, I will. In fact, you know what I do is I take in my camera, I have a little switch that I can switch over to have my viewfinder show me in monochrome. 
So that is really an easy way that you can go out shooting in monochrome and get a really kind of an idea how these, how the gray tones are going to look, how this image is going to look in black and white. Because as you know, in black and white, uh, it's not just the absence of color. You're dealing with light and contrast and tones to get the image to evoke the, the meanings that you want. And where color is, it, frankly, it's a little bit easier in color because you have color that can draw your your attention to. But in black and white, you're stuck with just working in monochrome images and you have to control what the viewer sees based on what you want them to see in terms of light tones or dark tones and the contrast that you're showing. So it's a really fun exercise. So you shoot in in monochrome, it'll come into Lightroom. Actually, it'll come into Lightroom on my Z9. It'll come into Lightroom as a black and white image. And then if I wanted to click it over to color, I can because all that color information is still there. But it's a great way to go through when you're working. Create black and white images that you want to be black and white images from the very beginning. And then you can come into Lightroom and do whatever it is you want to get them to the level that you want so that you can have exactly what you're looking for. Next time, we're going to get into masking. You're going to love that. It's going to be great. See you next time.